the next few days, of course, that we might all overindulge a little bit in turkey, leftovers, stuffing and, of course, drinks. Sorry to be the party pooper on Christmas Eve, but we're being encouraged not to do that. Here to tell us more is NHS consultant cardiologist Asim Malhotra. Thanks for coming in to speak to us today. This is some research done uh, in Sweden about the risk of having a heart attack at Christmas. Is this obviously serious? Can you tell us a little bit more about what they found? Yeah, it's very interesting. So it's published in the BMJ and they looked at heart attacks over the year to look at peak times when heart attacks went up. And they found that Christmas Eve, around 10 p.m. for some reason in particular, um, there seems to be an increase. So an average number of heart attacks per day was about 50. And on Christmas Eve, it went up, jumped up to 69. So it's Christmas Eve rather than Christmas Day. Christmas Eve, Boxing Day and New Year's Day. Now, they've given some mechanisms or reasons why this happens. And there is good science to explain this. Um, it's a combination of overindulgence, sometimes obviously with food, alcohol, but also what's interesting is stress. People seem to be more anxious potentially around this time of year. It could be seeing family, it could be if you're elderly missing mm. a lost loved one, it could be worrying about finances. And when you try and understand and explain this, it, it actually comes down to the fact that when you look at heart disease, which is now described really as a chronic inflammatory condition, mixed with a number of risk factors linked to something called insulin resistance, which I'll explain. The same things that happen in the short term that all come together are also what causes heart disease to develop over the long term. Okay. So it's basically the simple things that I recommend to my patients are thinking about, okay, what are you eating? Right now at the moment, you know, there's been an evolution of the science and the current dietary guidelines are, are kind of outdated, flawed, wrong, influenced by the food industry. So I tell them to ignore Public Health England's guidelines because they have ultra processed food on what we call the eat well plate. Half of our diet now, Tom, in Britain is ultra processed food. A very simple way for people to understand that if it comes out of a packet and has five or more ingredients, it's ultra processed. Even modern supermarket bread is, bread is ultra processed. So we should be eating real food, home cooked ideally, cutting down the starch and the sugar. Um, exercise, very simple, just walking briskly 30 minutes a day, very good for your health, will reduce that risk of a heart attack. And then one other thing which I think is crucial is stress. Now, I, with my job and of people who you know, work long hours, for example, there's a lot more stress in society right now. And one thing you can do, one very simple thing you can do, is actually just meditate. So every morning now, for over the last few months, I myself spend anything from 10 to 30 minutes just deep breathing, first thing in the morning. And the research shows that if you do this regularly, it actually reduces your risk to adverse events from stress. So if you have a stressful situation, you're able to deal with it more easily. Now, Asim, you say this is very simple. Now, I've tried meditating and I'm terrible at it. What would be your advice to people who, like me, sit there and try to meditate and get stressed about the fact that you can't meditate, you can't clear thoughts? Keep going, because I was the same. When I started doing it, uh, Sally, I actually struggled because your mind wanders and you, but if you just keep at it, say, listen, I'm just gonna keep going. I'm not gonna get stressed about the fact it's not, I feel like I'm not meditating. Eventually, and even if you do 10 minutes in the morning, um, you know, these things are really, really important. And, and getting a good sleep as well. You getting... say that the research shows when it goes to meditation and things like that. Is, is it backed up by scientific evidence in terms of re lowering your risk of heart problems? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, there is some research in India with a cardiologist uh, in India who takes patients that for some reason don't want to have bypass operations for blocked arteries or stents, and he puts them through intense meditation. And after a year, he repeats their angiograms looking at their arteries and shows that there's some reduction in the heart disease. So it does make sense. Also, we know stress reduction reduces inflammation in the body. And inflammation, chronic inflammation, is at the root of heart disease. Drew, just bringing it back to, to the issue of Christmas and overindulgence, if people are you know, a little bit worried about maybe taking in too much food or drink over, over the next couple of days, and I suppose it's mainly, is it not, about having maybe underlying, already existing underlying issues that put you more at risk, I'm guessing. Tom, you're right. So when, you looked, when we look at this research more specifically, the subgroup of people that were more at risk of having heart attacks were those who were elderly over 75, had diabetes, type 2 diabetes, and uh, had pre, uh, prior history of heart disease. So those people are particularly vulnerable. Now, type 2 diabetes, interestingly, we now know um, and this is something that I wasn't taught in medical school, is now a reversible condition. I mean, I've had patients that have reversed their condition within months of changing diet. Tom Watson, deputy leader yeah. of the Labour Party, he read my book that I wrote about the science on this, and he managed to lose 100 pounds in a year and reverse his type 2 diabetes. So that's the good positive news. But I think we need to try and implement these lifestyle changes. Um, and of course, if we do that, even in the short term, 
you can reduce the risk of adverse health problems. Now, Asim, please don't ruin Jackie's Christmas by saying no champagne. The odd drink's okay, is Listen, it? Listen, absolutely. You know, it's, Christmas should be about enjoyment. And if you're going into this, if you're drinking with a positive mindset and you're not overindulging, then, you know, it's the time to celebrate and be happy. Everything in moderation. Absolutely. Good stuff. Absolutely, <laughs> Malhotra. Have a great Christmas. Thank you for coming to speaking to us. Appreciate Pleasure. it. Uh, Jackie, there you go then. Champagne's still on the menu. Yeah, but you just.